So we understand that, that the ministry gift of prophets are very vital to God's harvest, to harvesting and turning people's heart back to God. Prophets are inspectors. They are fruit inspectors. If no one else will stand up and say, you know what? This here is not of God. It's the prophet because the most vulnerable gift out of the five ministry gifts, the apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is that of a pastor. That's why God needs a prophet or a prophetess. The male is prophet. The female is prophetess. He needs messengers. He needs those who have sat back, who have spent time with Jesus and will call out and call you out if necessary on things that harm the harvest. Why? Because pastors are most vulnerable. Why? They are collecting money on a regular week or monthly basis. They are gathering people towards them. They could get comfortable with the things of this present world out of the, the monies that they're soliciting week after week after week. So the trap is, is, is easily set for a pastor because once you get comfortable, you have more to lose. You, you have a tendency pastors to bend the, the true gospel of Jesus Christ that will offend you. The Bible says to them that perish, the preaching of the cross of Christ is offensive to them. So I'm still trying to figure out how a real pastor can actually have a mega church. Because when you are dealing with the cesspool of sin, when you are calling people out and you're not doing it from the pulpit only, you are calling them in your office saying, we need to have a conversation because I see that you keep coming up in here with your lover all hugged up and kissed up in church and I know I didn't marry the two of you. Come on, y'all. Talk to me about this. Now, how could you have a mega church? A lot of mega churches, it's no indictment on anyone personally. They are not preaching the unadulterated word of God. That's why prophets stand off. They come off the wall. They start calling that stuff out. They start sounding an alarm to let the people that truly love Jesus and is following him, doing our very best to walk in the way that is straight and narrow. They are big mouths. They sound the alarm. Why? Because the people are being tainted. They are being used, abused, raped, robbed, and prostituted by false teachers, false pastors, predatory pastors. These are not men and women sent by Jesus. So you need all of these gifts to harmonize and synergize so that in the end, Christ wins. But if you leave most of these corrupt preachers to themselves without someone calling that stuff out, people who are weak in their faith will be devoured. So my friend, Jesus has not commissioned you. If you do not understand, there are five gifts. This is what the Lord told me is the reason why many pastors in particular do not believe in apostles and prophets. One, there has been much abuse with these offices. But the primary reason is most of them that don't believe in prophets and, and apostles also do not believe in the gifts of the spirit. They try to explain it away. Why? Because the carnal mind cannot receive spiritual things. Most people I have ever met, 99.9, .9, they are not spiritual. They do not prophesy. Do, they do not speak words of wisdom. They do not believe God to move by faith through them to bring healing. There is no praying and laying on of hands by the elders in the churches. My friend, that is a given. The reason why some so many people are sick is because you have carnal men who do not listen to the spirit of Christ. The instruction in the scriptures is when there's someone sick among you, bring them to the church and let the elders lay their hands on them that they may recover. My friend, a person who is not spiritual is trying to figure all this out in his or her head. This is why Jesus can't trust them with anything because they want to have a formula and a science for all things. And for that reason, multitudes are perishing because the gifts of the spirit are vitally important for harvesting the, 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 the souls of men and calling those back who have backslidden and who have become apostate. Let me give you eight things, reasons that uh, or, or things that you got to look for from the time Jesus calls you to the time he will release and give you 
permission. Remember, your commission is permission. Number one, the reason why you must understand the difference between the call and the commission is preparation. In order to build confidence, you need to be prepared. You need to know doctrine. You need to know who is Jesus? Who was he? How did he operate? How did his apostles operate? How did uh, Jesus handle uh, uh, criticism? How did Jesus handle tragedy? You need to know about this man called the Christ. We must know him intimately, my friend. We must know who Jesus is. Many preachers don't have a clue who Jesus is. They could tell you more about their bishop and their prelates than they can about the Christ. My friend, the call and the commission is preparation to know Jesus Christ intimately, to know how he will handle ministry in the 21st century. Would he be online? Would he be preaching and teaching online? I believe absolutely. Would he be uh, uh, walking around with a camera on reality TV? Absolutely not. Would he be opening up his mansion, showing you his house, his cars, his land, and his Rolls Royces and his Land Rovers and his... Uh, no, he would not. My friend, number two, he wants to teach you to trust him. My friend, you got to trust him because if he puts you in pain and desolation, he doesn't want to lose you, my friend, because you got to be gutted out. You, number three, you got to be emptied out for, from the love of this present world. The commission doesn't come if you still love houses, cars, and land and position, and you still want people to call you the bishop, the reverend, the most reverend, the master prophet. My friend, Jesus has not commissioned you because no servant's greater than his master, and Jesus was Jesus. He did not wear a title. The Paul, the apostle of Jesus, all of his 13 epistles in the New Testament, he, he uh, began each salutation as Paul a servant, not apostle Paul. Number four, how to please God. That's what he wants to teach you, my friend, between the call and the commission. He wants you to be fearless. He wants you to fear no man, but respect all men. Number six, who is Jesus? Jesus even asked, that's kind of like what I just gave you in number one, but look, the difference is he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? My friend, you got to be able to answer that question because that is what you preach. Who is this Jesus? And if you are preaching Jesus as a Santa Claus, as a magic genie Jesus, you have not been commissioned by Jesus. If you are preaching the gospel of, of uh, blab it, grab it, sow it, reap it, you have not been commissioned by Jesus because that is not the gospel. The gospel is you are a sinful person. You have been given a way of escape from God's judgment. His name is Jesus, and he has opened a way for you to be forgiven, my friend. If you will repent and turn from your sin, you shall have everlasting life. That's the gospel. That's who Jesus is. And that's who he wants you to tell people that he is, the savior of the world. Not that they're going to have their financial debt canceled. He has forgiven us and he has canceled our sin debt. That's the preacher's oration. That is, that is the heart of everything that we do. Whether you're an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, you're not commissioned without the gospel. Number seven, Jesus wants to make sure that you will not abandon him. The word of the Lord tells us that he, he was abandoned at the cross. The scriptures also tell us before he commissioned Peter and told him to go feed. He didn't say lead. He said, go feed my sheep, Peter. There's a difference between feeding and leading. When you are a feeder, you are automatically a leader. So what is happening in the 21st century church, we are trying to lead instead of feed. We are feeding the people of God. God, how to live, how to please God, how to get through the snaps and the, tr the, the snares of the enemy. We are teaching them how to behave, how to war and win for their soul. My friend, he wants to know that you will not abandon him because we are not called to lead. We're called to feed. Don't forget that, my friend, because feeding is leading. If you're not feeding, you're not leading. Number eight, he wants to teach you to love the word. 
You got to love the word because Jesus was the word made flesh walking around tabernacling. So my friend, if you don't love the word for yourself, where you spend that time quietly with God, this is the air that you breathe is to, to be a student by the spirit of God. So what happens, my friend, listen to me and hear me very well as I bring this to a close about your commission. Not your calling, your commission. You know you got that calling. But my friend, if you have not been emptied out, you are still very materialistic. You you don't handle criticism well. You know what? Nobody likes criticism. But when you are pondering criticism for weeks and months, you are immature and you are not commissioned by Jesus. Jesus is not going to send you into that harvest as a pastor, a traveling minister, and you can't stand being alone. He's not going to send you on the road, my friend, and you are still dealing with pornography. My friend, Jesus didn't, he, he wouldn't do that. He did not send his followers until they were tested and he proved what was in their heart. Peter is the best example, my friend. If you have not gone through a season of just where you know it was just a wilderness, just you and God, he didn't commission you. Permission is what you're looking for. Not an ordination, because you could go online and get one of them in, 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 in a week. <laughs> you, you got folks that ordain anybody, honey, if you pay them $500. My friend, look for the, the commission of Jesus. You will know it, friend. It cannot be explained. It cannot be expounded. It has to be experienced. And as we all say, and we know this, some things are taught. Some things are caught. When you are commissioned by Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, I can assure you, my friend, you have tenacity. You have what it takes to move through traditions of men and, 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 and the weighty, manipulative disposition of many of our leaders today who are apostate. And for some of them, he's just said Ichabod. His glory has left because they love money, houses, cars, and land. My friend, this here is the reason many have been disqualified. This right here. This right here. This is going to be your the, the final frontier is the test about that money tree. My friend, that money tree will mess you up. We know Ecclesiastes tells us that money answers all things, but it cannot soothe an aching soul. It cannot save the soul. It cannot restore the soul. It cannot bring us back into right standing with God. It is Jesus the Christ, him and him alone. My friend, check these things. Make sure that man has not put you in a position because you could preach. My friend, that is, that is the low end of preaching uh, or being a preacher because the Bible says, how can they hear except for a preacher? But the preacher must know the Christ. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have his oil, if you don't have peace and joy and it doesn't anchor your soul, he did not commission you. He's not going to send you out into this harvest and you are mentally unstable. You are taking psychiatric drugs behind the scenes. Friend, he didn't send you. And if he did send you somewhere, you got off track. You need to go back. You need to repent and go back and ask for permission to go back out in these fields Come on now, you got to be willing to give it all up. You say, but Sister Sharon, I can't. I got too much to lose. I got I got a 10,000 member church. I got house. I got car. I got this. I got that. My friend, you cannot. The Bible tells us, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? And my friend, Jesus is not going to put you out on this mission field so you could end up losing your soul. It's like the Titanic. It's all going down. And it's best that you lose everything on this side than to get to the other side. And he says, depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity and I never knew you. I never sent you. I don't care how many demons you say you cast out or how much you prophesy. Jesus will say, I never knew you. I love you, my friend. Be wise. Look for that commission. Till next time, God bless.